Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 15th of November, 2022, Tuesday in the week of Trinity 22. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662. That means we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him as psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long as I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. I do my swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We're invited to rejoice in the strength of our salvation, or literally the rock of our salvation. What is the strength of our salvation? It is not the strength of a man or a hero or a demigod or a superhero uh, um, out of the Marvel comics. It is the strength of the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth. It is the infinite power, infinite goodness, and infinite wisdom of the creator of all things, uh, that has come to our rescue and made us, taken us as his own people in an uh, amazing act of grace and mercy. Uh, and uh, no wonder then he challenges us 
to hear his voice, to heed his word, to know his will, to walk in his ways. How, why should we cheat ourselves of entrance into rest everlasting? Our Psalms today on the 15th day of the month, Psalm 75, 76, 77, begin on page 431. The strength of our salvation when faced with the arrogance of worldly power, uh, and it's uh, the way uh, worldly uh, power throws its weight around, intimidates uh, and bullies. Here is a psalm of reassurance when faced by that intimidation. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Yea, unto thee do we give thanks. Thy name also is so nigh, and that do thy wondrous works declare. In the appointed time, saith God, I shall judge according unto right. The earth is weak, and all the inhabitants thereof, I bear up the pillars of it. I said unto the fools, deal not so madly, and to the ungodly, set not up your horn. Set not up your horn on high, and speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor yet from the south. And why? God is the judge. He putteth down one, and setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full mixed, and he poureth out the same. As for the dregs thereof, all the ungodly there shall drink them and suck them out. But I will talk of the God of Jacob, and praise him for ever. While the horns of the ungodly also will I break, and the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 76 continues in this theme, um, God's presence among his people uh, and is the condition of his defending them with great acts of judgment above all his resurrection. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. At Salem is his tabernacle and his dwelling in Zion. And so we have a prophecy here of the incarnation, God's indwelling uh, his people in the person of Jesus. There break ye the arrows of the bow, the shield, the sword, and the battle. Thou art glorious in might when thou comest from the hills of the robbers. The proud are robbed, they have slept their sleep, and all the men whose hands were mighty have found nothing. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse are fallen. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when thou art angry? Thou didst cause thy judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth trembled and was still, when God arose to judgment and to help all the meek upon earth. The fierceness of man shall turn to thy praise, and the fierceness of them shalt thou refrain. Promise unto the Lord your God, and keep it, all ye that are round about him. Bring present unto him that ought to be feared. He shall refrain the spirit of princes, and is wonderful among the, the, the kings of the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 77 develops this line of thought in the face of present afflictions. Faith uh, looks beyond them and draws new hope from the church future from the memory of God's saving acts in the past. I will cry unto God with my voice. Even unto God will I cry with my voice, and he shall hearken unto me. In the time of my trouble I sought the Lord. I stretched forth my hands unto him, and ceased not in the night season. My soul refused comfort. When I am in heaviness, I will think upon God. When my heart is vexed, I will complain. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so feeble that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old and the years that are past. I call to remembrance my song. And in the night I commune with mine own heart and search out my spirit. Will the Lord absent himself forever? And will he be no more entreated? Is his mercy clean gone forever? It is his promise come utterly to an end forevermore. Hath God forgotten to be gracious? And will he shut up his loving kindness in displeasure? I love those lines. Hath God forgotten to be gracious? And I said, it is mine own infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most Highest. I will remember the works of the Lord. 
and call to mind thy wonders of old time. I will think also of all thy works, and my talking shall be of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is holy, who is so great a God as our God, that art the God that doest wonders, and hast declared thy power among the peoples. Thou hast mightily delivered thy people, even the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw thee, O God, the waters saw thee and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water, the air thundered, and thine arrows went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was heard round about. The lightning shone upon the ground. The earth was moved and shook with awe. Thy ways in the sea, and thy paths in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Thou leddest thy people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the third chapter of the book Ecclesiastes, or The Preacher. Uh, and uh, uh, in the face of vanity, the futility, the transitory nature of this world, what is a man to do? Where is he to set his hope? To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit hath he in that he worketh, in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in its time. Also he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that man should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. Here endeth the first lesson. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all for ever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all for ever. Blessed art thou on the throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all for ever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all for ever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all for ever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him for ever. Amen. Here beginneth the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem and there follows a series of controversies, showdowns in the temple courtyards, the place of teaching and preaching uh, between Jesus and his adversaries and critics uh, and also <coughs> uh, in teaching of the people. And it came to pass that in one of those days, as Jesus taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Or who is he that gave thee this authority, this right to teach, uh, this right to instruct in the name of God? And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then believed ye him not? But and if we say of men, all the people will stone us. 
for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Uh, you don't tango with Jesus uh, um, in, and, 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 and come away victorious. Then began he to speak to the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard and led it forth the husbandman and went into a far country for a long time. And at the season he sent a servant to the husbandman that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandman beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent another servant, and they beat him also, and entreated him shamefully, and sent him away empty. And again he sent a third, and they wounded him also, and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they did the very opposite. They reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy those husbandmen, and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, and this must be uh, the uh, chief priests and scribes and elders who were asking him questions, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? Psalm 118. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the, the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind them him to powder. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. Do you think? Just possibly. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, righteous men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him into the power and authority of the governor, uh, the Roman uh, official, uh, magistrate. And they asked him, saying, Master, and so here's the here's a little trap they're laying, um, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, a little bit of greasy flattery, neither acceptest thou the person of any, you are very impartial, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? And this is the payment of the tax uh, required in Roman law of non-citizens. But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny, the coinage used for the taxation. Whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. He said therefore unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer, and held their peace. Here endeth the second lesson. Uh, in our own time we take that, that Jesus is neatly dividing into separate compartments the authority of church and state. Of course he's doing nothing of the kind. God's authority runs through the whole of human society, and indeed the whole world, and even Caesar is subordinate to his power. If we are to render unto Caesar, we do so for the sake of and in obedience to uh, the God to whom all things must be rendered, and most especially ourselves, who are made in the image and likeness of God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. 
And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us, as members of one body in Christ, commend ourselves and each other and the whole church and people of God to his watchful and gracious care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health unto all nations, that the whole world may be filled with his glory. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, that God, it may be so governed and guided by God's good spirit, that all those who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries, in their peace, order, and good government, and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world uh, and here in uh, Savannah and especially at St. John's in Savannah for the faithfulness of their witness and worship. I bid your prayers for all those who suffer in mind, body, or state that the Lord may so comfort and relieve them, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. I bid your prayers for all widows and orphans, for uh, the hungry and the homeless, for the um, abandoned and the abused, uh, for uh, prisoners and captives, uh, for refugees, um, for the wounded, for all women in childbirth, all young children and their parents, all women expecting children and the children they're expecting, those burdened with anxiety, depression, and mental illness, those facing the challenge of sobriety, those undergoing surgery are recovering from it, those suffering critical illness, debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, those in palliative care, the caregivers and healthcare workers, for all doctors and nurses, for those who are grieving, and those who are dying. For those departed this life in the faith of Christ, that we with them may rise to glory. And this day, that being safe under the protection of the divine mercy, guided by his holy word, strengthened by his Holy Spirit, we may serve and please him in all that we do, being conformed to the likeness of his Son. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only, 
that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the church, in continual godliness, that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve thee in good works to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth the eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From Psalm 77. Will the Lord absent himself forever? And will he be no more entreated? Is his mercy clean gone forever? And is his promise come utterly to an end forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? And will he shut up his loving kindness in displeasure? And the answer to those questions wrung from our anxious and fearful hearts is given us in Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day in your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his perfect will as may be most expedient for you.